Abney Park's The Toy Shop at the End of the World. Chapter 10, Silence Above. In the afternoon they woke, and the girls sat on the stairs in quiet conversation. There was no sound above, and the silence was terrifying. There are no kids playing today. No, and no toys. Do you think Calgory was eaten by the skeleton? asked Isabella. Her eyes were red and fearful. I don't think so. Automatons don't eat, as far as I know, said Chloe. I think he was taken to the tower. I wish we had a hero to rescue him, like when a princess is taken to a tower. I wish we had a hero to rescue us, said Chloe. But I don't even know what a rescue would mean for us. What did Gyrod mean when he told the ballerina to act like a machine? I don't know. It sounds like it's against the law to be a thinking automaton. That's why they took the toys that could play with you. But left the toys that couldn't, like kites and such. Chloe sat and thought a moment. It feels like most good things are against the law. Yeah, said Isabella. It's still quiet. Wouldn't the kids come anyway? I mean, if the door is broken and the other toys are just lying around, won't the kids come in and at least play with the other toys? asked Isabella. What do you think the quiet signal flies? <laughs> I think it's pronounced signifies. That the kids are scared to come. They know something bad happened here, so they are staying away. Above them in the shop, Timony spent the day cleaning solemnly. She had never cleaned before. She was not good at it. But her goal was not to make a clean room. She had seen how sad the girls were at seeing the broken toys and dolls. So she wanted to clean away the little bodies so the girls would not have to see them anymore. More than once she shivered as she picked up a teeny body and realized she was no different than these broken toys. So Timony swept, and while she swept, she worried about the girls and how to get them food. She had no money and didn't know how she could earn it, since the automatons apparently only worked for people that owned them. Automatons were not paid. Most of the day, the street outside the shop was filled with commuters, doing their best not to look at the shop. They knew the shop well, and anyone who had regularly passed the shop had long suspected that the magic in the shop was not legal. Broken glass and missing toys and official red signs posted to the windows were proof that the police had caught up with the eccentric toy maker. By the early evening, Timony had managed to put the shop in enough order that a drunk man, staggering from one bar to another, mistook the shop as open. He staggered into the shop and saw the destruction and said in an inappropriately loud voice, Jeez, this place is a dump! Then he saw Timony. She was on the far side of the room, sweeping. Her small and symmetrical back was turned to him. Hey there, barmaid. How's about a drink? He slurred, walking towards her. He was a heavier man, with a red nose and a tight brown velvet suit jacket, the buttons of which were barely containing his alcohol-engorged stomach. Timony stopped sweeping and turned slowly and gracefully to face him. A drink? She asked. Ho, ho, he said, seeing how pretty she was. His eyes traced the outline of her barely pubescent figure. He licked his lips. I am not a barmaid, she said, and she furled her brow and looked sternly at him. She was angry at him for staggering disrespectfully around this solemn scene, and she pursed her lips, frowning. He didn't see the anger. He saw a tease. He saw a pretty girl playing... Hard to get. No, you're a barmaid. He laughed loudly, and he grabbed her tutu. You're a dancer, he said, walking around behind her, and he slid a thick hand over one of her shoulders and caressed her exposed collarbone. She stood still, confused. Yes, I am. I'll bet you just love to dance, he said, his voice filled with greasy innuendo. I do. It makes me happy. Oh, I bet it makes everyone happy, he chuckled. He put his hands on her hips. Will you dance with me? I have to clean this shop. Why don't you clean afterwards? 
That'll make more sense, won't it? He said softly and uncomfortably close to her ear. How much you cost? Timony thought about the girls and getting them food. She didn't understand what this awful man wanted her to do, but she knew he meant to pay her for it. So, she said, Twenty-five. 